October 12th was the day on the college football calendar that many of us had circled since the college football schedule was unveiled, and it didn't disappoint with so many instant classics that we got this weekend, from the early game between South Carolina to Alabama all the way to the nightcap between Kansas State and Colorado. Every game delivered. Every game brought excitement. Multiple games went to overtime, and there's so much to talk about in today's stock report. So today we are going to be taking a look at the players that boosted their draft stock over the weekend, as well as the new updated top 25, as well as the Heisman power ranking. So if you guys are new to the channel, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Really helps me out, lets me know you guys are enjoying the videos. Also, sign up for my Patreon, which I will leave linked down in the description below. There you guys will get exclusive access to my draft guide with over 500 prospects, scouting reports, and evaluations. It's $5 a month. I highly recommend checking it out. So much work goes into that on a weekly basis to try and give you guys the best college football and draft content possible. Also, be sure to sign up for Underdog Fantasy using my code JWAX to get double your initial deposit. Um, that is code JWAX to double your initial deposit. I love their pick em games. They're higher, lower. It's one of my favorites and huge fan of what they've got to offer. Been a great sponsor to the show, and I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. And uh, let's go ahead and kick this off with who has to be the biggest winner of the college football weekend. And that's going to be Penn State tight end Tyler Warren. Warren has really been the entire offense this year for Penn State. Um, their leading receiver, he's he's been everywhere for this team. They've found ways to use him in multiple ways, whether that's in these weird formations where he's throwing the football or today where they're using him as the center as a decoy, and then he's going out and running a route where he makes an unbelievable contested catch. Tyler Warren has been doing everything, and he's a tight end that I was a bit lower on coming into the draft cycle. Bit of an older prospect, lack of production. You really watched him last year. On a roster where you could argue he's more talented than Theo Johnson, really was never given the opportunity to go out and prove it on a consistent basis. And this season, he's proving all of my doubts wrong on him. He's been absolutely incredible. Sets an FBS record, or ties an FBS record, I should say, for receptions in a game by a tight end. 17 receptions for 224 yards and a touchdown um, he's been awesome. He's got incredibly reliable hands. He can block. He can go out and run routes. The yard after catch, you're not necessarily getting a ton from him. I don't think he's super explosive after that. But the hands, the size, the blocking, it all gives you a lot of hope on what he profiles to be at the next level. And he was a guy that came into the season as my number eight tight end in the draft class. I'd moved him up slightly, but I've come to the conclusion I think he's the number two tight end in this draft. He's got it all that you look for in terms of build, blocking, receiving, upside. And I think he's a first to second round prospect right now. He's been incredibly impressive. And I think he's going to have a really fun role at the NFL level. I've got him as the biggest winner of the weekend today. Then we get to edge rusher Kyle Kennard. Now, I do apologize. The stats are wrong on this. I should have double checked that. But I've got the stats pulled up right here. Finished the game with seven total tackles two sacks, and three tackles for loss on the day for the Gamecocks. And, I mean, he was everywhere. Alabama's offensive line had really no answers for him. Seemed like he got a little bit banged up there in the fourth quarter. But Kyle Kennard, man, he has been so freaking good for this South Carolina team all season long. Transferred from Georgia Tech, he's got incredible explosiveness. He's got really solid bend he shows an array of pass rush moves that really excite you about him as a prospect the size the length I think some of the stuff that you might worry about he's 240 pounds he's not one of these big bruising edge rushers that you might look for at the modern NFL level might profile better as an outside linebacker I thought sometimes his quickness slowed down around the edge but the way that he's producing as a pass rusher in multiple different ways, he can rush with power, he can rush with finesse, he's got speed, he's got good burst. I mean, this is a guy that was not on many people's draft radars coming into this season. He is up to his stock to being a legit second round pick, maybe picked in the top 40. He could sneak into the first round in some situations and I wouldn't bat an eye at it. I think coming into the day, he was my number 12 edge rusher in the draft class. 
moved him up significantly. I think I've got him as the number seven edge rusher, jumping guys like Jack Sawyer, because I just think that athleticism and the bend and the array of pass rush moves, it excites you about what Kyle Kennard's future holds at the NFL level. I'm a big fan of this guy. I think he's going to have a really nice role, and I think he's got an incredible projection to the NFL level. Another player that I thought was awesome today was wide receiver Evan Stewart. Stewart has been – he's been okay for Oregon this year. He hasn't really been this absolutely incredibly productive player that you would have hoped to see for Oregon this year. It's really been a lot of Tez Johnson and some Treshawn Holden, who, by the way, should probably get his scholarship or, uh, taken away. What he did was completely unacceptable today. I was honestly in disbelief that that happened. But talking about Evan Stewart, and Evan Stewart was incredible today. Seven receptions, 149 yards, a touchdown. It's the way that he was winning, though. Evan Stewart's undersized. That was the big concern with him coming into the year. He's like 170 pounds. Like, this guy's got to bulk up. He's got to get bigger. He played bigger than his size today. And Denzel Burke, who... I did a video on him yesterday. If you didn't check that out, I highly recommend it. I'm a lot lower on Denzel Burke than the consensus. I don't think he's very good. Evan Stewart just absolutely rose. Like he burnt him multiple times in this game. The quickness, the route that he ran on the deep ball, I believe in the second quarter. I mean, it was a beautiful route where he kind of sells it to the inside, ends up getting Denzel Burke to bite and he takes off because he is so explosive and has some unbelievable speed in the open field. You love to see that. Then he had a really good contested catch in the end zone. Evan Stewart is one of the more talented receivers in this draft class. That's never been the question. The question was the size was, can he stay healthy? Because he really hasn't done that. And the lack of production at Texas A&M. And he really showed that he can be a complete wide receiver prospect. I've had a second round grade on him. He hasn't really moved up or down for me this year. And I still think he could be a second round pick at the NFL level because the explosiveness, the speed, some of the route running stuff that he does do is really, really impressive for a receiver. And he had an incredible game against one of the best opponents they're going to face all season long. I thought this was a huge day for the Evan Stewart um, campaign. And I think he's going to, he's going to continue to build off of this moving forward. Speaking of wide receivers, Ricky White, the receiver from UNLV. Man, Ricky White came into the air as one of my guys in this class. He's not necessarily the fastest guy in the world, but he is a reliable route runner with great hands. He's going to win across the middle. And he has been dominant this year for the Rebels. And in a really fun game last night against Utah State, where we get the battle of two of my guys, Jalen Royals, who... I mean, he could have been on here for the second straight week, 150 yards, a touchdown, I think on six receptions, something like that. Jalen Royals is a player that I honestly have graded higher than Ricky White, but Ricky White's a really fun player. He, like I said, I don't think he necessarily has the speed to win deep consistently. That's not his game, but the way he kind of works that intermediate area to the field, he's got such reliable hands. He's such a smooth route runner. I mean, he was uber productive last year for UNLV this year he has just continued to build off of that and continue to be a receiver that I think is a legitimate day two pick you the route running and separation is what you look for at the NFL level you're looking for guys that create space and make plays happen Ricky White does that in a at a really high rate which makes you really excited about what he can be the production's great had an awesome game against Utah State and a pretty fun one um and we'll talk about another UNLV player here in a minute, but I thought Ricky White was really impressive and deserved a shout out. Uh, Cam Scadabo, man, this is one that is really fun. He's got such a unique build. I want to say he's like six foot, 235 pounds. I could be wrong on those measurements. Don't quote me on that. And a player that like I watched, I was watching a little bit of, I want to say BJ Green last year caught some glimpses of the Arizona. No, I was watching Elijah Badger. And you catch glimpses of Cam Scadabo. You're like, this guy's like really powerful as a runner. I mean, I don't really know where he's going to profile as. I don't know if he's like this great NFL running back. I really don't. I think he's a great fullback though. And I mean, I know not a lot of teams are running fullbacks out there, but with his playing style, 
the way that he's just powerful and can kind of win these short yardage situations. Kind of think Cam Scadabo could be a fullback at the NFL level. We'll love to hear some Arizona State fans uh, on their opinions on that one. But another just really, really good game against a good Utah defense. 22 attempts, 158 yards, two touchdowns. Made plays happen in the receiving game. We talked about it. He's got a big frame, but he doesn't lack an explosiveness. He can win big plays down the field. He's a weapon in the receiving game. I also think he blocks really well. He's a player that is on my radar right now to do a full in-depth film study on. He is a player I will be looking at in the coming days because I've been pretty impressed with what we've seen this year. Been one of the best and most productive running backs in all of college football this season. And for an Arizona State team that I thought was going to be pretty bad, Scatterbo's kind of helped keep their offense relevant and they're playing good football. Pull off a big upset at home against Utah. Um, Cam Scatterbo. Um, wanted to give him a shout out here, a player I haven't really talked much about on the channel, but had a really good week this weekend for Arizona State. Uh, Jerzwan Newton probably butchered that name. This is the brother of Jerzon Newton, uh, Washington Commanders interior defensive lineman. Seven receptions, 159 yards, two touchdown. Jim Nagy, director of the Senior Bowl, put out a tweet talking about uh, Newton being a potential mid round pick and. He's been very productive this year for Toledo. Toledo's got a few guys that you can look at as like legitimate draft prospects. Newton, Darius Alexander, the defensive tackle, and Max and Hook, the safety. Three players that are on my radar to look at later on in this week. But Newton, he's been very productive for the Rockets. He's got good hands. He's been a reliable weapon. Um and yeah, don't really have much to say. Wanted to shout out a smaller school guy here from Toledo. Had a really good game against Buffalo today. He had both their scores. Uh, Toledo didn't really have the best of games. Uh, Newton had both of their scores and had a really solid day. So want to give him a shout out, and he's another winner of the weekend. Uh, Howard Cross the third, really interesting stuff from him because the Notre Dame defensive line has not played great this year. I was not very high on Howard Cross coming into the year. I was very high on Riley Mills coming into the year, and – I didn't really know what to expect. Howard Cross is an older prospect. He does have the better overall frame, but I think there's a little bit more concerns in his overall game. Had a really solid performance today. Uh, six tackles, two sacks, two tackles for loss today. And I thought he played a really good game. He's been an impactful piece uh, up front for this Notre Dame defensive line. And like I said, the defensive line hasn't been awesome this year for the Irish, but He's making an impact, and he's making plays happen. That's really all you can ask for at this point from Howard Cross. Definitely think he is upping his draft stock, though. I, I still think he's probably a day three pick, given the age. I do do think there's some concerns in his game, but it's nice to see these Notre Dame players playing well. Six tackles, two sacks, two tackles for loss, and a good game from Howard Cross. O'Donnell Fortune is a player that I studied last week um yeah it was last weekend when I studied the rest of the South Carolina defense and I really liked his game I have an affinity for these South Carolina defensive backs you can go back the last few seasons I loved Cam Smith when he came out Darius Rush I thought was awesome I'm a huge fan of Nick Eman Wari and O'Donnell Fortune is a my guy in this class as well this guy is really explosive he plays physical he plays to the line of scrimmage and he wants to hit he had a tackle for loss. He comes downhill and plays the run pretty well for a corner. The interception that he had today was one of the best interceptions I've seen all season long. He's on a completely different assignment in the corner of the end zone. He sees Milrow throw it, and he completely turns his body mid-run and goes straight to the air, ends up picking off the football in the end zone. O'Donnell Fortune's a player with good size, good athleticism, solid tackler. And if he can make more plays on the football like that, he is going to be a legit draft pick. I think he is a probably a early day three pick right now, maybe like in the fourth round. But I think O'Donnell Fortune is a really solid corner that needs to get a little bit more love in this draft class. I think he's going to have a really nice NFL career. Speaking of corners that I think are going to have a nice career, it's Zai Alexander. Had a big interception in this game for LSU, but zero tackles is fine. I'm not too worried about tackles for a corner. It's not a stat that I think really matters. Zion Alexander made some big plays on the football. He had the interception, as we mentioned, 
for some reason, PFF didn't register that last play. Or it was a play, yeah, it was third, third and 20, I think, for Ole Miss. He has a pass deflection on that one. He he gets his hand on the football and makes it uncatchable for the receiver. Zion Alexander is another corner that I do do quite like. I think he's got solid size. I think he can move really well for the position. There's a lot to like there. Um, this was a game that, I mean, my eyes were on Oregon, Ohio State for a lot of the day. But when I did turn this game, it felt like he was making plays. He's sticky in coverage. He's got good length, good size, and made some plays on the football today. That excites you um, as an LSU fan. The defense played well today. They had some really solid plays from their defense up front. And Zy Alexander, a big winner of the weekend for me. Another player I wanted to highlight, we talked about the other UNLV player. Jackson Woodard didn't really have a great game in terms of tackling. Had half a tackle for loss, and that was really all he produced there. But his coverage field is what excites you. Two interceptions in this game. For a linebacker to have two interceptions and three pass deflections, those are really good numbers. There's just not a lot of these really great coverage linebackers that are rangy and instinctive like Jackson Woodard is. And he's another player. He was on the Senior Bowl watch list, and he's been awesome this year for UNLV. Could end up being one of the top 10 linebackers for me in this draft class. Um, another player that is on my list to look at later in the week. Um, but I've loved what I've seen from him, loved what he's shown in coverage. And I think he's got the upside to be a really solid linebacker at the NFL level. So love what we've seen from him. He's another winner of the week for me. Heisman update here. Yeah, I think Ashton Genty has solidified himself as number one. I know everyone's been talking about it all week. I was trying to give Travis Hunter a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. He played better competition. He's playing both sides of the football. I can't really make an argument for it. Ashton Genty is playing better than anybody in college football right now. He is putting up record-breaking numbers right now for Boise State, and we might actually get a group of five winner here. Uh, Travis Hunter, he drops a spot. It sucks because I think if Travis Hunter is healthy in this game, Colorado does end up winning this one. This was a thrilling game down to the wire. Colorado's down 24-14. Some questionable play calling on the offensive side late on the fourth down. Defense also kind of playing press coverage, which didn't make a lot of sense. Shiloh Sanders was terrible in this one, but uh, Travis Hunter dropped and Ashton Genty moved up to number one. Cam Ward, they didn't play today, but I think he's playing better than any quarterback in the country right now. He's putting that team on his back. I got them at him at three still. Shadur Sanders had a really good game. Up until that interception, he was pretty perfect in this one, to be completely honest with you. He's accurate with the football, made really smart decisions, put the ball on a string. He made some beautiful throws in this one. I think it was the second and 20 in this one or something like that. Just an absolute beautiful dive to Omari and Miller. It's the play where he unfortunately got hurt. But it's those type of plays that really excite you about what Shadur Sanders could be at the NFL level. And then Dylan Gabriel, he jumps Jalen Milrow this week. Uh, Milrow has been really disappointing for me the last couple of weeks. Had a couple of really bad interceptions in this one. The inaccuracy concerns continue to show up. And Dylan Gabriel was my preseason pick to win the Heisman. And it's funny, we'll talk about Oregon here in a minute, but he's been awesome. Some of the throws he made in this game were like Michael Penix level, like, oh my gosh, that was one of the most gorgeous throws I've seen in a long time. I thought Dylan Gabriel was, he was a surgeon today against that Ohio State secondary, and he was awesome. So he is the number five player. You could argue you could swap him and Shadur Sanders. Cade Klubnick, though, is making a very, very strong case to be in this top five. Uh, but that's kind of where things stand for me after week seven talking about two teams that dropped out of the top 25 it's utah cam rising sucked he was questionable a uh, game time decision for like the 12th time in his collegiate career uh, ends up playing probably shouldn't have played three interceptions ends up costing this team the game when it's all said and done utah really hasn't been that great they barely beat oklahoma state which was viewed as as a big win uh they lose to arizona i yeah they lose to arizona that's a pretty bad loss. Arizona has not looked very good, and they they lose to Arizona State. So they have fallen out of my top 25 completely. A team that I thought was going to win the Big 12 and kind of run this league. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. And Oklahoma, 
probably shouldn't have been a top 25 team anyways. This offense is absolutely god awful. They're lucky their defense is good, but they did not look good today, losing 34 to 3 against who I have, spoiler alert, as the number one team in the country. That being said, it's a game that they just never had any grasp on. All three levels of this game was bad. Defense played poor. Offense was even worse, and even the special teams had some bad moments. So I've got those two teams dropping out of the top 25. But other than that, not a ton of movement here. Um, We'll start off at number one, Texas. Pulls off a big win against Oklahoma. Quinn Ewers is back. Looked solid in this game. Nothing to really write home about for me um, on that front. I thought the Texas defense was stifling. They made plays everywhere. And on top of that, I really liked what we saw from um, Gunnar Helm. I think he has been one of the best uh, up-and-comers this year in college football. A player that wasn't on my radar at all. He's had an awesome season. Oregon jumps up to number two. I mean, it's funny because we dropped Oregon all the way down to number 11 after the first couple of weeks of the season. And I told you guys when I did that, I was like, yeah, they're probably going to end up jumping back up. But what we saw those first two weeks of the season was concerning, and they've really cleaned it up, proving that they do belong in the Big Ten. They played physical. They played tough. Um, The defense was what was really impressive to me. The corners did a really good job. Jabbar Muhammad had a solid play in this one late. Um... Derek Harmon, who we did a video on, he was everywhere in this game. Uy Aguilale, at least one of them can play football. I thought Oregon was awesome today, and they're the number two team in the country. And then we talked about Penn State. Man, this Penn State team was a team I didn't have making the college football playoffs. I didn't think they were going to be very good. They have gone in, and they've won some really good matchups. And you look at the rest of their schedule. Like, their only tough game left is that Ohio State game in a couple of weeks, which we will be there no matter what. Um, Drew Aller is playing really, really good football. I'm, I'm highly considering moving him up to like the Garrett Nussmeyer tier, like a second round grade of a quarterback because the arm talent's there, but he's been really accurate with the football, making good decisions. He's athletic. Penn State's winning football games. They got a really good defense as well. Um, Abdul Carter's really coming into his own. Danny Dennis Sutton's playing good. I know people are going to disagree that I have Penn State as the number three team in college football, but here's the thing about Penn State. We can talk about that they they get behind early, which they have. They struggled early against UCLA. They struggled early against West Virginia in week one. They struggled early against USC. This is a team that just finds ways to win. They're scrappy. They play hard. I love that. They stay at three. Miami didn't play today. I, I'm still higher on Miami than most people. They've been in some close games, but not a team I'm worried about. Ohio State drops uh, from two to five. I mean, they're still a top five team in the country. You do have some concerns about this defense, though. Denzel Burke was burnt toast today. He was terrible. Um, their secondary just got beat. The pass rush really couldn't create any pressure up front, which does concern you when you are supposed to have two of the top edge rushers in this draft class. I do like Jack Sawyer. JT Tuim Oluwau, the more I watch him, I I mean, I think he's like a day three prospect in all honesty. Georgia stays the same. It looked like a scare there with Mississippi State. Carson Beck did not look good again. I think he had two interceptions in this one. Kind of unacceptable if you ask me. Uh, But they find a way to win that game. Clemson jumps from number 10 to number 7. I've been blown away with Clemson. I think they're playing some of the best football in the country right now. This is a team that has good defense, but their offense has just been electric. We talked about Kate Klubnick. I don't think we're even giving that guy enough credit. He has been off the charts good this year for Clemson. Antonio Williams was a my guy. He's been awesome. This is a passing game that has really figured it out after that week one game against Georgia. And I think they're a top 10 team without a question. Alabama drops one spot for me. You shouldn't have been in that situation with South Carolina. Milrow didn't look good. The defense, though, is what really concerns me. I just don't trust their defense in the slightest. I just don't think they've got a good defense right now. Damani Jackson made some plays. People are obsessed with LT Overton. We'll do a video on him later. I'm not a fan. Um, and I, I thought Malachi Moore was pretty bad today. Like there was just a lot in that secondary that 
I was a little concerned with. This is a weird Alabama team. Um, I, I mean, I've got them at eight. Tennessee drops a spot as well. You should have been in overtime with Florida. Nico Iamaliava has just not looked good for the last two weeks. Hoping that we get a really good one between Tennessee and Alabama. Two struggling teams. Obviously, you guys know where I stand on that one. Go Vols. Um, Iowa State just continues to win these Big 12 matchups. Beats West Virginia. Good game on the cold. It was a cold night there in um in West Virginia. Iowa State, I think, is the best team in the Big 12. I think they're 6-0 and for the first time, I want to say, since 1938. This is a good Cyclones team. Notre Dame dominates Stanford. Not really much to say there. Riley Leonard has a good game. We talked about Howard Cross. Texas A&M didn't play, but I've been really impressed with what we've seen from them, particularly on the defense. I think they've been able to create pressure. Their secondary is playing well. They stay at 12. BYU jumps up to number 13 from my number 20 spot. I mean, BYU has got like one of the best resumes in all of college football right now. And if you look at the rest of their schedule, I don't think I see a loss on that schedule for them. This is a team that very well could be 12 and 0, 11 and 0, whatever it is, and end up playing the Big 12 championship game. This team's balanced. They're playing good football on both sides. And they're a team that's it's really interesting because I look at that BYU team. I don't really see any draft prospects on that team. This is a really just sound organization that's playing good football. LSU jumps the spot after a really impressive win against Ole Miss. I mean, Garrett Nussmeyer struggles for most of the game, makes some big plays down the stretch. Kyron Lacey in overtime, big game from them. But the defense is where you feel pretty good. They were finally able to generate some pressure. Secondary played well, as we talked about, Zy Alexander. They win. And then Ole Miss... I think their playoff hopes are officially dead. I don't think they fall out of my top 25 because you lost to Kentucky and you lost to LSU. Still think they're a top 15 team. They played well today. When it mattered, though, Jackson Dart just didn't have it, and that that could really be a game that hurts his draft stock down the line. Indiana doesn't play today, but I'm really excited to see their game against Nebraska next week. I think that's got an opportunity to be game of the week for me. Kansas State. They don't move up or down for me. Good game against Colorado. Avery Johnson looked really solid tonight. One of the best performances I've seen from him in a while. Um, Defense came up clutch when it mattered most. I got Kansas State at number 17. Boise State beats Hawaii. At least I think I'm still recording this game. They had a pretty big lead when I started to record. So we're just going to assume Boise State won. But Ashton Genty's playing good football. They stay the same. Same thing with Missouri. They stay the same after beating UMass. Pitt jumps up from number 21 to number 20. This team's 6-0. and They haven't like beaten anybody that I'm like blown away by, but they're playing good football. Eli Holstein's playing really well. Kanata Mumfield, they've got good receivers. I like this Pitt team. SMU's another team that you can argue has a really, really good resume. They've beaten some really impressive teams, beating Louisville, who's a really good team. They had some big wins this year as an SMU team that there were some concerns early, but they've really turned it around. I got them at 21 and then army and Navy, two teams that are going to be ranked for me this week. Army jumps up Navy stays where they were at last week, but man, I just am praying that they beat Notre Dame, both of them. So we can get a thriller on the army Navy game. I think it would be incredible. And then Illinois uh, and Nebraska, Nebraska didn't play today. Illinois in a wild game against Purdue, 49 to 50. Purdue misses the two point conversion late. But that is the new and updated top 25. Let me know who do you guys think I missed? Who should be in it? Who should be left out? Uh, I know a lot of people are going to say Vanderbilt should be in the top 25. I get it. Not quite there with them yet. Uh, but there's, there's a case to be made. Uh, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like on this video, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.